come in and attach my thread just behind the bead snip off the excess for the tail fibers on this pattern I use a synthetic material called floral fiber and I'm shooting for about five to six fibers I'm going to catch them just behind the bead and wrap back to a point that's about parallel with the bottom uh, of that tungsten bead and then return that thread just in front of the hook point when I snip these off I want the length of those to be about the length of the hook shank somewhere in there it doesn't have to be perfect but it should be close for the body of this pattern uh, I use mid-size stretch tubing and inside the tubing is a piece of black small UTC wire so that's kind of extended so that you can see that and at the end the far end I like to leave a little bit free I want to be able to pull and stretch this as I wrap it so when I tie this in I do want to tie it in uh, on the end that has the wire and the stretch tubing in the exact same place. Once again, using that hook point for an index. I'm going to come in here, stick the nose of my bobbin in, catch it with two solid snug wraps, and then I'm going to wrap rearward all the way back to where I stopped with those tail fibers. And then nice and snug as I return, I want side-by-side -side wraps all the way back up to about that same stopping point. I'm going to put a couple loose wraps forward so I can let that thread just kind of sit out of the way. I'm going to pull on the end of that tube, stretch it out nicely, and then just begin to wrap that forward. This is a size 14 hook that I'm tying on right now. So it usually takes me somewhere between five to six wraps uh, to get back to that hook point. Once I reach that location, I'm just going to back those wraps off. I'm going to catch it with one nice snug wrap. Put a couple in front and before i really lock that down i'm going to helicopter this and obviously that's not to break the tubing but it is to break the wire that's inside the tubing so we'll helicopter that off and then once i do that i can stretch it and get a really nice compact tie-in point snug that down and then come in and snip it off with my scissors the next material that i'm going to bring in is my ostrich churl and i'm going to catch that by the tip right there at that same point where I left off and I'm actually going to wrap back on to the last little segment of the tubing lock that down and then bring my thread forward and out of the way and before I bring this forward I'm going to put a little drop of zappa gap right on that same location and the purpose of that number one it, it does lock down the end of the tubing which is a good thing but it also locks in uh, the stem of this ostrich roll as I wrap this around the stems, the brittle part. And so when I lock that down in the zappa gap, it just gives it a lot more longevity and protection when I'm fishing this. So I want to shoot for four to five wraps right there into the zappa gap. I'm going to clump them up together right over the top of each other. Bring that over when I've got my four to five. Lock it down on the thorax. Snip off the excess. And I'm going to just moisten the tips of my finger Kind of bring these fibers back and out of the way makes it a little bit easier to manage before i bring in the thin skin um, once again going to touch this thorax area with just a little drop of zappa gap thin skin does have a slippery texture uh, and if you put it there without it it'll tend to kind of rotate and spin as you fish it with the thin skin i try to cut it approximately or close to uh, the width of the bead for the size that i'm using i usually catch it on the side it's a little bit easier for me to see. Secure it with a wrap or two. And this stuff's nice and pliable. I do want it butted up against the bead, but I'm just gonna kind of pull it down and give it a yank or two. That tends to kind of keep it out of my way as I work. And then I'm gonna wrap back over that approximate front third portion of the thorax. I'm gonna let that thread hang right there. So now I'm gonna bring in a little bit of loon swax and I'm gonna create a sparse dubbing loop with my eye stub for the eye stub coloration on this olive one I'm using olive brown before I bring that dubbing loop forward I'll put a little drop of zappa gap on here on the base of the thorax and this just locks down those fibers as they come around further enhances the durability of the pattern as I wrap this forward, it's really important that once I start to lay down fibers, that I brush back between wraps. 
And the purpose of that, the bonus of that, is it just helps them lay back, get that nice backward facing, pulsing, buggy movement on the pattern. I want to go all the way up behind the thin skin. I really want to pack this dubbing in right behind the bead. It's going to make for a more effective finish. Take one more wrap up in here. Snug that down. Come around. Catch that with one wrap behind it. Wrap in front of it. Come in and snip that excess. Reach in and just kind of pluck out some of these extra fibers so we still expose the back end of that fly. So we've snug that down. I'm going to throw in a couple extra wraps here. At this point, we're going to come in. We're very simply going to pull that strand of thin skin down. So we're going to pull it down. We're going to pull it back. I'm going to stick the nose of my bobbin in there. I'm going to come up over the top of the thin skin. Collapse it. Secure it nice and tightly behind the bead with a few more wraps. And then I'm going to snip the excess. When I cut this off, I want this to be about the length of the front third of the fly. And I'll whip finish that by hand. And I'm going to bring in uh, some UV cure material. You may have your preference for this because of the fact that this thin skin is flexible. I like to use the, the fine flex um, from Deer Creek because it will actually wiggle and Durability seems to be a little bit better on this flexible material than it does with the rigid material. 